What's going on, comic fans? It is Mike from the Hardcover Comic here. Hope you guys are all doing well. Wishing you all the best during this crazy, crazy year. Um, today, I wanted to talk about five more Boom titles. So last week, I sort of spoke about these five newer Boom series that have come out, have either been completed or are still ongoing. And uh, so at this week, I wanted to talk about five more Boom titles. These have all been completed for a good chunk of time at this point. So you'll have a lot to catch up on. A lot of these are 30-ish 30 30-ish issues or so. So good amount of content for you to read as well. Before we get started, though, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. This is what we do on a regular basis. Live streams, overviews, reviews, top fives, top tens, whatever it is. Matt and I are in the mood to do a lot of custom bind talk as well. Love doing custom binds. I should have some more soon. Um, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, if you're a new watcher. For all our subscribers, love you all very much. Um, check out our Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. You get entered into a drawing to win a brand new Omnibus hardcover, deluxe editions, whatever it may be. Last month, for the month of September, our winner got three Valiant deluxe editions. So something to look forward to. If you're interested in merch, there's a, a, our email is down below in the description. Just hit us up. We've got shirts, this logo, Matt's rock, the other logo. You can check out our Instagram to see what uh, what other merch we've got we got mugs and fun stuff like that so without further ado let's dive in and talk about five we'll call them classic boom series <laughs> we'll start off with what uh in my definition has become a very essential must read for me whenever the holiday season comes around that is klaus Klaus was a, a story written by Grant Morrison with artwork by the incredible Dan Mora. God, I love Dan Mora so much. He's, he's amazing. Um, so Klaus was a, an eight-issue miniseries that was released a handful of years ago um, where Grant Morrison gave his spin and his take on the origin of Santa Claus. Where did he come from? How did he get the ability to make presents and deliver them to kids all around the planet on the same night? Of course, it's all fiction, but Grant Morrison's take on it is very cool, very supernatural, a lot of fun. There's a lot of fantastic action in here with, of course, the incredible Dan Moore's artwork representing the whole thing. Um, it's it's beautiful. Thankfully, Boom did collect these in oversized hardcovers as well. So in front of me, I've got the original deluxe edition that came out that collected the eight-issue series. Um, very nice book. It's also got this little gold um, outline on the pages. I don't know what to call that. Frame? I don't know. I'm stupid. Um, but basically, the book block has sort of a gold shine to it. Uh, and right here in front of me, I've got a, another deluxe edition that collects um, a few of the one shots that they did. So every year, basically, for uh, three or four years, they did one shots. Um, and it got collected in this very nice hardcover edition as well. I think these are both out of print, quite difficult to get. So I apologize for that. But you can always read this digitally, pick up the trade paperback if you can. Um, it's it's wonderful. It's so good. It's got um, it's got love in it. It's got heartbreak. Um, it's got it's an emo emotional roller coaster. You get to see Klaus have to deal with um, basically a bratty kid and, and 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 sort of a kingdom with a ruler that does not necessarily believe that wealth and um, material should be distributed with any sort of aim at equality. So um, it's very interesting. I loved it very much. Grant Morrison does his usual thing, bringing some supernatural trippy stuff into the story. Dan Moore does his incredible thing with making the book jaw-droppingly beautiful all the way around. Um, you get to see, again, you get to see the origin of Santa Claus as Grant Morrison would have it be. It's really fantastic. I loved it so much. It made me tear up. It made me smile from ear to ear. It made me sit on the edge of my seat during the action sequences. If you're looking for a book that you're going to enjoy rereading every Christmas holiday season whatever you'll want to call it in this day and age i highly recommend checking out klaus it's probably the best winter christmas santa claus related book i've ever read in my entire life next up is coda by simon spurrier unfortunately my i don't have my custom bind yet but that series is going into my first of all my first simon spurrier anthology custom omnibus which i'm very excited about i love simon spurrier but um, Coda, Coda is such a great story. It's a 12-issue miniseries written by Simon Spurrier with artwork by Matthias Bergara. Um, I believe Matthias Bergara won the Eisner Award for penciling the, ish, the, the book. It's beautiful. I'm going to say that up front. Matthias's artwork is 
stunning. It's so well done. It's a little stylized. It may not be for everyone. I understand that. But between the colors and the pencil work and the detail and the universe and the creativity and the designs that he's done, it is one of the most fascinating books to look at. So much detail, but also um, a lack of detail where it's not needed to sort of make these beautiful landscapes. Um, any sort of one page or two page spread in the book is beautiful like breathtaking you will literally be shocked at how beautiful it is i wish they had i wish boom had done oversized hardcovers for the series it deserves it for sure but if you're stuck with three trade paperbacks collecting four issues each that'll get you the entire series and what the series is is it it follows a character whose name you don't find out for a while um as he's sort of on a quest to rescue his wife from these these Urken is what they're called. And Urken are basically the orcs of this universe. Um, Simon Springer does what he does best with this incredible, massive world building experiment where he throws you right into it. You get used to the lingo and the slang very quickly. There's a lot of it, but it's all explained very well in context without directly explaining to you, which is something that always blows my mind about Simon Spurrier, the way he can make you feel invested in a world that's completely made up with all these differences, but you know, differences in terminology and um, sometimes economy, society um, that you can sort of relate to and really become a part of quite quickly is astonishing to me. It's one of my favorite things about him as a writer. And Coda is absolutely no exception whatsoever. Um, so you get introduced to this character who's trying to save his wife and um, and his pentacorn, his unicorn, which is amazing. Um, I love it so much. It's so cool. Such a great animal. Um, which comes in, which helps him out very, very frequently, has a good relationship with it. And really the story is about him sort of going through this world which has lost its luster and, and there's no new magic in this world anymore. And um, you sort of see how societies and the civilization in this world has sort of re-pieced itself together, sort of the fragile alliances and boundaries and borders that have been created as a result of these um, substantial changes in the universe's physics, essentially the magic, um, which is sort of similar to uh, Simon Spurrier's mini God Shaper. But um, regardless of that, it's fantastic to explore this universe um, with our with our character, seeing him get into all kinds of trouble and situations, running into some truly fascinating characters, one of which is essentially a uh, a magician who has lost his mind, a grand wizard. It's amazing. It's so well done. You get to see him interact with all these characters and sort of um, make jokes out of the the world and what it's become now while he misses the old world while he's on he's on the hunt for his wife again another simon spurrier emotional roller coaster um that's sort of again about the the development of characters and following your hopes um in the attempt to sort of you know make the world into a way that makes sense to you shape the world in a way and yourself so that you can exist and keep on going and have a goal that you're aiming towards it's really magnificently done amazing action amazing creativity it is everything you want in a uh, fantasy comic book combined into 12 issues with a huge story that most writers in all in all honesty would stretch for way longer and lose the luster and the magic and the excitement of but simon spurrier doing what he does compresses this epic story into 12 issues and makes it feel epic all the way through i highly highly recommend coda the third book I wanted to talk about is Grass Kings. I did a whole video on this, so if you want some extra super in detail information on the title, be sure to check that out. I'll leave a link down in the description below. But Grass Kings was a 15-issue miniseries written by Matt Kint with artwork by Tyler Jenkins. Uh, Matt Kint, I've mentioned him many times. He's done so, 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 so much work. I mentioned his title, Folklords, in my previous Boom video. Um, Tyler Jenkins has also done a whole bunch. He did Peter Panzerfaust at Image Comics, which really blew up his career because that was a huge title at Image. Um, number one was going for hundreds of dollars at one point in time. Um, since then, he's done things like Grass Kings. Um, King of Nowhere was a recent series that he did as well, and a bunch of other titles that I forget because I'm recording, and now my brain decides to forget everything I usually know. But Grass Kings is a murder mystery in a world where there is essentially this piece of land in the United States called the Grass Kingdom. Um, within the, the Grass Kingdom is run by a, a, a band of brothers, one of which is a police, another one is considered sort of the leader of this tribe of human beings. And what they've essentially done is they've broken off from the U.S., they've created their own government, um, well, I say government, they don't have an, an official political party or anything, but they've got their own organized way of dealing with crimes and policies and rules and regulations um, because it is a smaller tribe of people it's a little island 
and throughout the story you find out that there is um, essentially a serial killer um, either on the island or near the island uh, or somewhere within the vicinity of the island as people start dropping like flies. Of course, the, the actual Grass Kingdom itself does not have the best relation with the neighboring county. I believe it's called Raven County. Um, so you see some back and forth between the sheriff of that county and essentially the sheriff of the Grass Kingdom. It's so well done. You get to explore the lives of so many characters within these 15 issues. Matt Kent is a genius storyteller. I've said it many, many times. I love that dude. Anything he writes, I will follow it and I will praise it because it's usually 99% of the time gold. Um, so I, I really loved Grass Kingdom. It seems very simple. There's not much supernatural to it. There's nothing supernatural or science fiction or fantasy about it. It's very much a grassroots story about people dealing with things. You know, I I've, I've personally would not mind fi finding a place like this to live. It sounds like a great idea. Usually turns into a cult, but that's not what happens in this book. But um, either way, it's so well done exploring this community of characters seeing how they interact with each other what their past experiences have been how they're tied into the serial killer if they are um, and you get to see again how other um, parties interact with this grass kingdom and um, you know how the certain things I don't, again i'm not going to spoil anything but there is a ton of stuff going on in this book and tyler jenkins artwork is again stylized but if you're a fan of like jeff lemire artwork or matt kins artwork you will love tyler jenkins artwork i think it fits the book the, it's not super detailed there's a lot of watercolors but personally i'm I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lover of a variety of artwork of various artists and so it worked perfectly for me since it's a completely new title i had no expectations going into it and was absolutely blown away in front of me i got the three hardcovers that collected the entire series i believe these are all pretty expensive to get at this point because it's a rare occasion boom did a hardcover comic but you can pick up the trades i'm sure get it read it on comiXology i highly recommend you do and I highly recommend you put aside a good chunk of time because you're probably going to want to binge all the way through it in one sitting. Next up is a book I unfortunately do not have any hardcovers for. Um, it is Irredeemable. Irredeemable was one of the one of the oldest, I think, Boom Studios titles, if I'm not mistaken. It's it's pretty old. I'm relatively old compared to the, the, some of the other books I've been talking about. But it was written by Mark Wade with artwork by Peter Kraus. What a story. What a story. So... If you've read Injustice, this was Injustice before Injustice, essentially. Um, it's a, a completely new superhero universe that Mark Wade and Peter Krauss created um, that follows a, a group of characters similar to the big two characters, superhero characters, with a lot of same power sets. Um, primarily the, the, the Plutonian, he's sort of the star of this book. Now, this isn't a spoiler because you find out within the first few pages, but the Plutonian goes on a rampage and starts taking people out. He starts taking all the superheroes out. Um, and their families and their loved ones and crazy things like that. And throughout the book, you sort of get to see the present and the past as they sort of jump in between these ver two timelines, showing how the Plutonian was when everything was going okay and sort of that downfall into insanity that he goes through. Um, and then you get to see the present as he's terrorizing everybody. It is incredible. Absolutely incredible. It's one of the... Um, most exciting takes on a superhero universe that you'll read. Like I said, it's been done quite a few times since then with books like um, Injustice in particular is very, very similar to it. Um, obviously with characters we're more familiar with, but Mark Wade does a great job of sort of throwing you into this universe of completely new characters, making you fall in love with them, um, making you invested in them and recognizing their powers with some amazing artwork by Peter Kraus. There were four premier collected editions that collected the entire run that were oversized. Um, those are very difficult to get now. Um, and I think there were omnibuses as well, trade paperback omnibuses, but I know you can get this all digitally. So if you're really looking for something fun and exciting to read and you're big into superheroes, please do yourself a favor, check out Irredeemable. There is also a sort of spin-off series that uh, follows different characters called Incorruptible. Also highly recommend checking that one out. And the last book I wanted to talk about is The Woods, written by James Tiny IV with artwork by Michael Dialinus. I apologize if I butchered that, which I probably did. Didn't sound very good. But it was a 36-issue series from Boom Studios. Um, fantastic book. Just going to say it off the bat. That's why I made the top five, um, which I shouldn't have to explain. But I did, and so here I am. But The Woods. The Woods follows a essentially a high school where, um, you know, Amid the hustle and bustle of a regular day, you got student council doing their thing, you got the AV club, the theater club doing their thing. 
the jocks doing their thing and the school gets teleported. They don't know where, they don't know how, by whom or why, but uh, they get te- they get teleported. Is it another planet, a different realm, a different dimension? Nobody knows. There are different planets in the sky, different moons in the sky, um, and there are weird artifacts that they start finding. Not only that, but they very, very quickly get attacked by crazy, crazy creatures. Um, a really fun book where literally every page has you guessing what's going to happen next um you get to follow a group of multiple groups of characters whether you're looking at the teachers and the 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 faculty of the school itself and how they sort of you know try and maintain control um and then comparing them to like the student council that gets very involved in sort of trying to progress the students into a direction that makes sense that has some meaning for them that can actually help them survive this situation while they wait for help or either look for help and then you follow a group of other students who decided we should probably explore try and figure out what's going on because we found this artifact out there this artifact seems to be pointing somewhere let's go take a look and (laughs) things spiral out of control from there whether you're looking at the students at the school who are turning on each other the faculty's turning on the students vice versa a lot of inner uh, high school politics as you start learning about relationships people had in the in you know prior to this situation and why they're um why they may have animosity towards other characters why they may be seeking the power that they're seeking and then with the group of students who's walking around adventuring you get to see the craziness of this new area they're in this new world they're in as they sort of encounter creatures and monsters and make alliances um, and run into natives maybe very very cool book Um, 36 issues ran for a while so you got a good chunk of material unfortunately there were no hardcovers for the series it's all trade paperbacks there were i believe nine volumes collecting four issues each that summed up the entire series it was really well done the artwork may not be for everyone it's not the best artwork but i really liked it again i thought it suited the book very well and i didn't have any bias towards it because i hadn't seen any other artists on the title i was thrilled all the way through i could not wait to see what was happening on the next page because it was always exciting um tragic happy sad again with all these titles you're really getting an entire spectrum of emotion we're talking about top tier creative teams working on sensational books that um, are definitely worth rereading. I would absolutely enjoy rereading any of the titles I've mentioned during this this uh, this video. And um, The Woods in particular, being as long as it was, you get to explore a lot about these characters and this world. And oddly enough, things are happening at a very rapid pace. It's not drawn out at all. Um, so you really get a lot going on within every single issue. I really can't recommend The Woods enough. It's such a fantastic series. James Tiny in the fourth with his creator own stuff and his big two stuff is crushing it on most fronts he's such a fantastic writer and i in particular really favor his his series the woods there you have it people five boom must read classics we'll call them since they are a little bit older than the other books i spoke about in the last video and i said those are new titles so what do you guys think are there any boom titles you highly recommend i check out of course there are plenty of boom titles that are fantastic i'm not going to mention all of them these were my top five though what is your top five let us know down in the comments section below we always appreciate it and any information you can share about boom to further people getting invested in the company is much appreciated we have no affiliation with them but we just love their stories and hope you guys do as well um there's a lot of titles out there time to break away from the big two have some fun with some of these other titles with these incredible incredible artists and writers putting in a lot of work to make really memorable stories if you haven't already if you're a new viewer please subscribe um this is what we do on a regular basis i'm trying to post videos every week multiple videos every week overviews reviews hauls custom binds live streams all sorts of fun stuff whatever we come uh, come up with is what you're gonna get um if you're interested in the opportunity to win an omnibus absolute edition deluxe editions maybe a box set one day that would be cool um check out our patreon for as little as a dollar a month you get an opportunity to get entered into a drawing we do at the end of every month for every dollar you give you get another entry um last month our winner got three valiant deluxe editions so very exciting stuff going on there we also share digital codes whenever we can if you're interested in merch a mug a shirt um we have various logos hit us up our email is down in the description below if you're interested in that we'll get things going with you thank you all very much appreciate the time you took watching this video hope you guys are all doing well staying safe and sound 
This was Mike from the Hardcover Comic. Until next time, as always, you stay classy, Internet.